Well, these guys don't need much of an introduction, uh, although I'm going to introduce them. Brandon Boyd and Mike Einziger from the very popular band Incubus. Yeah. Yay. Bar mitzvah. All right. So guys, are we in a new experiential economy? Are you the new experience? <laughs> I love that term. I've heard it for the first time today. I have no idea. <laughs> Honestly. Well you, well, you went to Harvard, didn't you? Not me, no. That guy right oh, there. Well, maybe we should have you heard that term before, Mike? Experiential Experience? economy? I mean, I guess that makes sense. I don't, I, I'm, I'm wondering when this um, non-experiential economy happened. <laughs> Can we talk about that? <laughs> well, that's a good one. Well, your, your, uh, your manager, before, I, before uh, we booked you on this thing, your manager said to me, these aren't typical rock stars, they're intelligent. <laughs> so does that mean that most rock stars are actually rather dumb? Or maybe in the pre-experiential economy, whatever that pre -experiential was. Pre-experiential economy. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Brandon's just, um, no, I think that there's um, a relative intelligence that has to be at play for any artist to put themselves out there enough to be heard and seen and, and you said the term um, just a minute ago about, you know, being shy of self-promoting, you know. Um, that's something that that I've struggled with still to this day. I, I, I feel a little bit dirty every time we have to do some kind of like advertising or something like that. But I understand that there's sort of a necessary evil if I want to do what it is that I like to do. So, um, and my point is I think that most musicians that have sort of broken through or crossed over have to have at least a very basic understanding of that, you know, so. Mike, is that what's yeah. changed? You've got to self-promote now? <laughs> well, I mean, you have to at least be competent enough, I guess, to, to sort of align yourself with somebody who you think might have your best interests in mind. Um, is that the audience or your manager? Uh, uh, that's who do you trust, you guys, as artists? Yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> we, we, we have to trust our manager. That, that's, that's actually um, something that hasn't changed. You know, we used to, the, the cast of people that, um, were involved in, in what we did, I'd say it was probably larger a few years back when, when, um, when we were dealing more with you know, record labels, um, or with our record label. Our record label has shrunken dramatically in size, and um, we, we seem to take care of a lot. We have a lot more control over things in sort of in-house now, I guess, with the tools of um, the, the emerging technology, it's a, thing, a lot more things are available to us to, to use to our advantage that we just didn't have control over before, but now we do. So do you agree with the, with the great Evan Lowenstein that you as artists know what your audience wants more than the audience itself? I mean, personally, I, I, I don't necessarily feel that I know what our audience um, wants. I, I, that, that kind of that idea kind of scares me a little bit, actually, because why? Because I I, I, I I like to write the music um, and and perform it. Um, I, I guess I I enjoy musing on what I think the our audience wants, but in certain ways that sort of um, that might uh, even pollute my creative process a little bit. It's a good point, actually. Um, it's. And that adds to the, the strangeness of the creative process, the more interactive um, things become. It's like you find out whether you like it or not, what the audience wants. And I agree with you, absolutely. Like I like to be aware of what they're asking for to an extent, but I like to be kind of unaware as well because it absolutely pollutes the process. And maybe pollutes the ro is the wrong word. It, well, it's I think it's different for every single person. Yeah, you know, it, it's it obviously influences different the process. For, yeah, it's obviously different for for different artists. But that's why you get a really, you know, broad range of different types of artists out there. You know, there are all kinds of different bands and and uh, um, musicians and um, I, I don't know. It's just. The, it varies so widely, you know, and, and some artists are very low key into themselves, and then, you know, then you get like Lady Gaga, and, and uh, I mean, the, there's just a, across the entire spectrum, it's massive. 
how has the internet changed audience in your experience? I think it's definitely shortened people's attention spans. <laughs> Twitter, right? Blame everything on Twitter. Uh, but Are it's they also, able to listen in more than 140 characters now? Well, I mean, when we were when we were young, um, we we did things like mail out mailing lists and um, you know drive around to different schools to pass out flyers. And in today's world, those are just non-activities. You don't need to do that anymore. That's kind of a waste of time because the internet allows you to be a shameless self-promoter in, in the privacy of your living room. <laughs> what about in terms of spending money, though? I mean, the old audience was one that every six months or a year came up with the 15 or $20 that allowed you guys to ride around in your limousines. <laughs> They're not doing that. You anymore. don't know that. What, the limousines? Or yeah, the... you don't know that we rode around in limousines. Or I'm not saying we did or didn't. I'm just saying you don't know. <laughs> I, I, I thought all musicians rode around in, in limousines. Now you're, now you're stereotyping us. <laughs> exactly. But back to... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry what the question was. I knew he went to Harvard. It's dangerous to interview a, a rock star who went to Harvard and you ask him for trouble. Um, <laughs> What about, though, this issue of the audience paying you guys? Maybe you don't ride in limousines, but you ride in something. You have to get around. You have to pay your rent. No, we you do have to ride in limousines. Ourselves. We do. We do ride in limousines. <laughs> <laughs> how, is the, how is the audience, though, how are they subsidizing the limos, then? I mean, you know. Well, um, that's a good question. We uh, had this interesting experience last week. We have a new record coming out in July. and. Um, our record was leaked. Somebody hacked into the Sony server and a pirate. A pirate. Yeah. He had a eye patch, patch on his eye. Yeah. <laughs> Wooden leg, scurvy, all of it. Um, it smelled worse than this carpet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was interesting though because, uh, to my knowledge, it had never properly happened to our band before. You know, I'm sure people have been illegally downloading our music for years. Um, but it never had such a direct um, effect on any of us, I know, for certain. And um, it, it, was, it was a strange experience because it felt, um, for about a day, for about 24 hours, it felt like you know, somebody had broken into the house and taken something that you were making, you know, and... Um, kicked you in the balls. Kicked you in the balls a little bit, yeah. Um, but then literally a day later, I kind of realized that it, it took away um, this fear that people didn't necessarily want music anymore. You know what I mean? Like it, there's this growing um, uncertainty in just in me as an artist. Is like, wow, like how do we continue doing this if we can't, you know, make any money? We can't sell CDs and this and this. But and and the biggest fear of all was do people even want the music anymore? And what that really reinforces, they really want it. They want it so much that they're willing to like take it even before you're done with it. <laughs> Uh, so why so in this weird way, it was flattering. Steal out of your refrigerator. <laughs> why, why was it like being kicked in the balls when they took your music? I mean, it, it's not, I, I guess, you know, just my honest feeling about it is not so much that it felt like being kicked in the balls because the music was taken. It's just that it's like a present that was waiting. It was, we were putting the wrapping paper on it. And mm. For your audience. They're like, no, 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 we, we want that. Let's take it. No, 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 no. And they ate it. It wasn't ready to be eaten yet. <laughs> so how do you make the audience more patient? I don't know. Put them in jail. But it, but but what, <laughs> but what Brandon's saying is that he's glad that that it showed that they were that they wanted the music. So yeah, they 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 ate it. <laughs> and we are in this quickly. interesting position, being in a band where we don't get paid per record sold. You know, our our job is to create songs and to play concerts. You know, and. Um, so it, it, we're in this weird kind of middle zone. Like, people ask all the time, like, how does it affect you? And um, I never knew what to say before because it never really directly affected us until just last week when the record got got effectively stolen, and now it's just kind of out there. Um, and like I said, for about a day, how long did it last for you? Where you were like, oh my God, we're over. Like, th this is going to ruin our lives. Kind of a feeling. I mean, it never, it did didn't, it really, it didn't really feel like that to me, but it, what it did feel like was that we are the ones, we are not the ones in control of it yeah. either. It's like we're kind of, what we think about that is actually sort of irrelevant because mm -hmm. we're, we're not the ones in control. It's just the, it's, that's the world that we live in now. 
Yeah. I have a feeling, by the way, on TechCrunch that some of the people who stole it, perhaps the original thief, is watching this. What would you say to them? <laughs> this is your opportunity to talk back. You can be audience. Right. Ooh. How you doing, old Coming sticky fingers? Coming for your patch. <laughs> <laughs> and your, your parrot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, honestly, it's the, it's the kind of thing where um, I'm just, and this is going to sound like a little bit of a cop-out, but I'm just thrilled that people are still enthusiastic about um, music in general, but our music after you know 20 years of being a band, there's always this feeling, it's like, all right, it's, you know, time up yet kind of a thing. And um, the fact that um, so many of our fans are, they want it bad enough to steal it is kind of a, it's a, it's a weird feeling. It's like half, oh my God, I love you. And how dare you? You know, it, there was something something kind of funny happened though. As a result of it, we you know we do a lot of um, we take part in a lot of activities that kind of directly connect us with our fans, like kind of web chats and um, uh, just like we send messages out and um, use all the tools that we have at our disposal to communicate with our fans. And I think that there's at least a, a personal enough relationship between us and the people who are listening to our music that we got sort of a, a a surge of um, messages and emails that kids actually felt really bad about the album leaking. You know, they, would, they started like self-policing. Yeah, like, people would be like, "Here it they is, check report. it out." They were they would report yeah. to us where the links were. So it was kind yeah. of like it was kind of like they were like, "We're sorry, guys. You know, for these you know these assholes who 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 stole the album. You know, we're we're gonna go buy it. We we pre-ordered it." We heard it. We listened to it. We think it's really cool. But well, we pre-ordered it but, too. But we bought three copies of it. So yeah. yeah. I wonder if those are like the our audience, like in their late twenties, early thirties, who are more conditioned to the older paradigm, and it's like the kids who are like, "Nah, fuck yeah. you guys." Like, yeah, <laughs> I'm taking it now. <laughs> yeah. I want to thank you. Yeah. No Thank you very much.